Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Hello, everyone. <laughs> What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are getting an origin for Ultraman, right? The Earth 3 Superman, it's about time. Only took DC Comics like 60 years to do it. Uh, so this is cool, right? I'm really excited about this. Now this comes off the tails, or really is, is kind of a backup feature for the main Crime Syndicate miniseries, which is really the first time in, in their history that DC Comics is actually developing any real measure of explanation to the Crime Syndicate, which is, which is really, 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 really cool. But because it's a backup feature, it's basically like five pages long, right? So it's not a super long, the origin. So just something to bear in mind as we go through this, this will be relatively short. But a lot of the stuff that we're kind of given here is pretty identical to the uh, the, the Superman mythos that we're aware of, right? There was the doomed planet Krypton that the, the parents of Superman basically put him on a ship and then sent him away. And he basically arrived on Earth where he was discovered by what were effectively the Kents, right? The big difference here when it comes to Earth 3, and I feel like this needs to be explained as opposed to the main DC universe, is that in Earth 3, everything's kind of different, right? It's, it's, it's opposite it, but only with so many limitations. And so the way that DC Comics originally did Earth 3, and when I say originally, I mean back before Crisis on Infinite Earths, is that the main people on Earth, right, the average person, you, me, anybody else, largely had like good moral values. We did good things, right? There was almost identical to the way that people operated in the main DC universe. The difference is that the superheroes were the ones who were twisted, right? So the superheroes were the bad guys. They didn't really care about anything else aside from consolidating power, making money, that kind of a thing. Uh, eventually DC changed that so that Earth 3 was a situation whereby the people on, on that earth were basically bad people, right? That all anybody cares about is just acquiring as much wealth and power as possible. There were a few events or circumstances where things were different, were kind of flipped on the opposite end, but they couldn't really get carried away with that, right? You couldn't really have a situation where like the British won the Revolutionary War because that's not what happened here in the main DC universe. And so you're just doing the opposite, right? You couldn't really do opposites in that most extreme because then it would start throwing in continuity issues. And so a lot of what you saw with the Earth 3 crime syndicate universe was really more of an opposite of the main DC universe insofar as like personality. Now, some of the roles are a little bit different and we'll talk about some of the differences in those roles when we talk about the actual crime syndicate story, right? For example, like Jon Stewart is an evil Green Lantern and the Guardians of the Universe in the Earth 3 universe are called the Overlords of the Universe. So we'll talk more about that as we kind of get into that. But again, at the moment, we're focusing on the origin of Ultraman here. And so what we end up kind of finding out is of course, it's powers manifested early on, just like they did with the main DC universe Superman, that his parents basically found out about it, just like with the main DC uh, universe Superman. But what ended up happening is that his powers, he actually started using his powers publicly. And that was something that you never really saw with the main DC universe Superman. That was the significance of Lana Lang. Lana Lang was basically one of the people that lived inside Smallville, who was one of the only individuals out there who was aware of the fact that Superman had powers. And Lana Lang was actually the person that helped him learn how to use his powers, right? That's the significance of her character in the main DC universe comics. Here, there doesn't really seem to be Atlanta Lang, right? There's nobody there to kind of coach him and teach him and show him that, yeah, you know, you can't really use your powers publicly or anything like that. And so a lot of the taunts that he got came from other kids who would refer to him as like a freak or a space baby or bizarro or something like that. And it's one of these things where his parents always seem to kind of be there to console him, but started instilling in him ideas like obedience. And that's the big difference between like John and Martha Kent or whichever version of the Kents you want to call him in DC Comics is that they taught Clark Kent that with all this power that he has, that he he can't like rule over society. He cannot make people do things. And yes, it'll be unfair. Yes, there are times when he feels like he should step in, but he can't because the world has to make his own way, that he has to be a model. He has to be something that's there that people can strive towards, but not something that, that, that he basically drags people into a future because they'll reject it, right? The only way for true change to happen among people is they have to be willing to change on their own. And so in this universe here, she talks to him about things like obedient, right? Like you show them how to be obedient. You show show them how to do what they're told, things along those lines, because he represents a higher level of power. And so again, it's one of these things where ultimately what ends up happening is that his parents basically take him, of course, to the barn, as we usually, you know, as we've seen so many times before, and present him with the fact that he arrived on Earth in a spaceship. And that's one of the things that they kind of say here, right? You know, like they basically say things like, we didn't want anybody to know about you, to know about your powers, to know that you were special. We were trying to protect you. We were trying to, you know, keep you from being taken away from us because they would probably try to enslave you or 
make you work for the government or something along those lines. But a lot of the, the kind of parental reaction that you would normally expect, right? Like we were trying to keep you safe. And so when it's revealed that he arrived on earth in a spaceship and comes from space, he immediately freaks out because that's when he starts to realize all the kids were right when they called him like a space baby and a freak. Not in so far that he is a space baby and he is a freak. That's not really the case, but in the sense that they all knew he came from space. And that's one of the things that he kind of picks up on with his parents is that they lied to him, right? They lied to him about the fact that no one out there is supposed to know where he comes from, that no one out there is aware of the fact that he arrived here on a spaceship or anything along those lines. All they know is that he seemingly has some kind of powers and all the teasing that he got and being made fun of constantly when he was being told like, you're a space baby, you're a freak, you're an asteroid kid, that he largely just kind of attributed that to this, this notion that he had powers. And they assumed that like, he must not be from here where he's just some kind of a alien or something along those lines, but just nonsensical terms that are used by kids who just didn't really know what they were talking about. The reality is they didn't know what they were talking about. More so than that, he starts to put two and two together and comes to this realization that the idea that his parents had of keeping him protected from the world was never really for his benefit. It was never really to, to keep him safe, to make sure that like the world couldn't take advantage of him. It was to keep themselves in this kind of position of power, right? That seemingly the reason why a lot of the kids used to give him a hard time, but the parents of the kids would never give them a hard time is because it was always kind of this idea among the kids that like, if you bring, if you give us a hard time, we'll kill you, right? Our child will destroy you, you know, or, or something like that, almost kind of forcing this town to live in fear. And so because of that, the kids didn't really have that same kind of fearful attitude that their parents did, because as we know, when you're a kid, usually because you're foolish, you end up feeling fearless. And so because of that, the kids didn't have that same kind of issue, right? They would make fun of him, that kind of a thing. And there was no indication that he would eradicate them, right? Because even he didn't fully understand what was happening and where he was coming from. And that's when he realizes like, you didn't want me to go anywhere. He didn't want anybody to know about the powers that I have because you wanted to use me, right? You wanted to use me to, to keep this town in control or whatever the case is. And so ultimately he ends up kind of lambasting him, right? Tearing him apart and just saying like, like, I don't want to have anything to do with you and ultimately bailing out. Now, something to understand here, do not let this origin story lead you to feel bad for, for Earth 3 Ultraman. He's a dick, right? Like he's a terrible human being. Like do not feel bad for this guy, right? This is designed to kind of show you how he got to that point. But the truth is that on this Earth where you have the, his parents acting in this way, everybody acts in this way. It's the way that it is here on Earth 3. Everybody only ever cares about their own personal interests. The interests, the values, the feelings of other people don't really matter. It's just the constant pursuit of power and being willing to sacrifice whatever you need to in order to get to that point. So this is cool, right? I'm, I'm really, really digging this. I'm hoping that we get some more out of it. Andy Schmidt was the one who wrote this and it's really, 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 really good. Um, I'm hoping that we kind of get these little backup features for the, all the other members of the crime syndicate. But if you've not read the crime syndicate issue, we can cover it if you guys want me to. We can cover it if you guys are interested in doing that. I don't see any reason not to, but it's really good. In some ways, it's, you know, a little you know, and kind of a throwback to, to like, you know, it almost feels like 1990s comics, especially with Kira McCown drawing it. Uh, it's not terrible. No, don't get me wrong. It's not bad. It's just kind of, it almost feels like a comic you would have seen in like 1999 from DC comics, but, uh, but it's cool, right? It's a cool story. And, and I definitely dig it. So let me know what you guys think. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to comics explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.